That's the goal is to appeal to anybody who wants a meeting space that can go up to 125 people. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is that Toronto has a lot of dungeons. The area, there's a lot of private dungeons. Mm -hmm. There's some dungeons out there available for rent. And ours is just one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, But the event space is different because after subspace closed down, that was one of the bigger venues where... now. I've been to Oasis. I love going to Oasis. I'm mm-hmm. not going to slam your sponsor whatsoever. <laughs> but they're not a specific, specific kink type space. of kink space. And subspace, mm-hmm. I find just the nature of the building. It's very broken up. There's mm-hmm. smaller playrooms. Yeah. Whereas we offer the wider space. Yeah. So it's a different different type of building altogether. Right. Right. And then if we we want to provide a safe space, because what we find is a lot of kinksters um, associate with kinksters because they don't feel comfortable. They don't feel accepted. Mm-hmm. It is not normal, considered normal, mm-hmm. for a man. It's submersive. It's subversive. Sorry. It is. It the really kink, is. That's still, what kink is. Yeah. Kink is still yeah. very subversive. It's still not. It is the it is the wave of things coming, I think. Ooh. Especially with Hopefully. Fifty Shades Hopefully. of Grey. And I'm going to pay due respect. I think that was what broke the majority it, of the public the awareness of kink as a thing yeah right unfortunately not, they did it in a very oh, they did not a I'm great not way i'm not gonna but take that away either they it was not the most research stalking is not consent uh no stalking, <laughs> stalking is, is not, not foreplay consent, stalking is not foreplay no uh, <laughs> and some of the other anyways however but it brought it to the mainstream definitely and the so attention it, of, it, it was yeah. a bit of a disruptor in that sense yeah, right yeah, yeah and yeah, so yeah, kink yeah. now is becoming more accepted it's becoming more aware people are like oh you know what i'm okay with getting a chance like i'm gonna move from like furry things around my wrist to <laughs> i want handcuffs now yeah right yeah because that'll be a bit more exciting to me and that'll allow me to release a bit further and get in, into a bit better headspace a bit quicker maybe you forget your concerns with your body when you're in that headspace yeah you forget any concerns you have with like any you know your whatever's going on in your life yeah this is the this is when you when you go into a bdsm play whether you're the dominant the submissive the anything to do with it it is to me I forget I'm I'm taking a break from my entire life. Yeah, in my your to do list is my to do list is done. Gone. I'm my worries are like whatever. I'm gonna deal with them later. Yeah. I'm just gonna holy smokes enjoy myself right now because this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And do you think it is as a person that uh, is a kinky person that engages in kinky play? Why do you think it is important for to be a part of the community, be, to attend an event space and meet other kinksters? What, it, what's the value in that? The value in that is to share your own trials and tribulations, perhaps, with someone that you've met. Make new friends who are onto things you have been into. Hearing about things that you've never heard about. Um, just finding a community, building a community together because the kink community to me is one of the most accepting, responsive, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> welcoming communities I've ever met in my life. Mm-hmm. These people, it does not matter what you look like, what you do, what you're into, as long as, you know what, the, this is a sort of a saying my business partner and I have, but your kink may not be my kink, but your kink's okay by me. Yeah. Right? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. okay by me. As long as you're doing the safe, sane, and consensual, yeah. and you find a willing partner, more power to you. Yeah. Right? And, and I feel and like so, it's just an information pool. It is. It's and just so, resources and access to information to make your play better more consensual, deeper spiritually, more sensual, Uh, everything. It's going to widen your worldview. This is what I'm trying to, the, this it's, it's, it's sort of an ideal that I'm describing right now, (laughs) right? It's, it's not the nuts and bolts of what we're doing day to day, but the ideal is it's a safe space and that any type of kinky people who want to gather in a group can consider us as a place to gather. We've got a wet and messy play Love. thing coming yes. up on August oh, the 11th. Yes, please. Uh, yes, where we're going to have like a meet and greet and see if there's people who are interested in doing wet and messy play in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Because we've got a warehouse with floor drains and hoses. Yeah. Can clean up, no problem. Yeah. Right? We've got a woman coming down to do a flogging workshop mm-hmm. at the end of August. Love it. We've got another one coming up early September on how to build a toy bag on a budget. So go to how to go to the dollar store and, and Home Depot and build your toy bag, your implements from there. Love it. So, you know, anybody who wants something 
alternative kinky cosplayers or somebody we want to or some of the people would love there's to a lot of in. crossover there's so much crossover yeah. with a just and that's kind of why we left the space as industrial looking as it is yeah because it can it can adapt itself it can be customized to any type of party that you want mm -hmm. and then we've got all of that sex furniture as well mm -hmm. right they yeah just... i feel like it's great that you mentioned wet and messy play because one of the things that i think would be important is like i can't really engage in wet and messy play in my condo because it's messy and i I, I don't want to clean it up and I'm going to wreck my furniture and my exactly. bed and my bedding. Exactly. So that's something that would be a great to go out to a play space and do. It really is. Yeah. And then, and that's the thing is, is because we'd be setting it up with all the appropriate tarps and yeah. kiddie pools and hoses and everything. Yeah. You can come out, get as m messy as you wish Yeah, and wear whatever you wish and get as messy as you want Yeah, and then help us clean up afterwards and we're good to go. Yeah. But exactly. most of it's already done because yeah. we're, you know, what are other types of play that are ideal like that? wet a messy play that are ideal for going to a play space for well, like, like what are some types of play that aren't ideal to just do in your house? They, they'll get that, such a better experience going to like a going space. Going to a space like this. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're doing is we want to appeal to is littles. Yeah. Little people who identify themselves as a younger age, not in a, in a, just in a personality way. So they just, they like storybooks. They like fairy tales. They, Disney is a big fan. They're big fans <laughs> of Disney. Yeah. And they can be any age themselves, but this is just what they enjoy doing. This is how they enjoy spending their time. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is have like a Littles tea party. Yeah. Where we've got a playground on one side where the Littles can all do their little out. They can, you know, play in the sand. They'll have their own meals over there. And then all of the adults, the bigs, mm -hmm. or, you know, various daddies, mommies, whatever you want to call them, uh -huh. would gather and have their <laughs> own sort of adult party mm -hmm. with alcohol and perhaps because we would get special events licenses for that yeah and and have their own party over there yeah so we'd have everything going on at the same time right and the ability with the because the warehouse is actually perfectly square mm -hmm. well not perfectly square but it's 1600 <laughs> feet and there's a, an i-beam in the middle so it divides up really nicely mm -hmm. into four mm -hmm. so we can have individual play parties going on mm -hmm. we were talking about i was talking with someone uh the other day about having um <clears throat> body drumming parties because body drumming is a really interesting thing it's not something a lot of people know about tell me a bit about that uh, body drummers so basically yeah. what the drummy is doing is they lie out for like just lie out on like a bed on the ground on mm -hmm. on whatever and people come up and just sorry i'm doing that i'm not disturbing the sound <laughs> it's great audio okay okay <laughs> but they just come up and they just drum on you in whatever way they want to do so it's so kind it's a of bit like of imp spanking yeah a little kind impact, of like impact. A little, yeah. and then the person lying there is just can you know wear clothes or not be say this area is a go this area is not mm -hmm. however they want to do it mm -hmm. but just come out and then we could usually you can only fit from what i understand about eight people on one person Mm -hmm. You know, if you only have eight people drumming per one person being drummed on, but we could set up four of them. Yeah. So we could cycle this through. This is very attractive right? to me. For a certain period of time, you could have your body drummed for however much time is appropriate in a normal session. I, yep. You know, and then we could cycle through and a whole lot of people could experience body drumming. Body drumming. drumming. Love right? this. And so again, but the space is so adaptable. This is what mm -hmm. I love about that yeah. space. It's adaptable. It can be easily cleaned up. We yep. can make it what is needed to. Well, another thing we want to do is actually invite photographers and models who want to update their kink portfolio. Oh, that'd be a great space to shoot in. Right? Yeah. Because we've got all of that fabulous furniture, pictures of which can be found on our website. <laughs> um, we've got all the fabulous furniture. We've got this white background. Tons of natural light come in, as you yes, saw. Yeah. We've got privacy screens now, vi privacy vinyl on the base of those gl big glass doors. Mm -hmm. But the uppers are all clear glass. So there's tons of natural light all the time. Nice, diffused, perfect for it photography really light. Yes. yes. Yeah, there's yeah. no like direct sunbeams coming in, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so there's so much that can be done in that space. And we just, we want people to tell us what they want, though. Yeah. Right? And that's the exciting part of it. We want to, we've been, just as we did after the vendor fair talk to the people yep. we're getting people out who have hosted parties and say what do they think what it like if you have hosted bleh, if you have hosted <laughs> a party in the past come out and talk to us and see if you want to host another one mm -hmm. and we can you know work together make it happen yeah exactly i love it creative right. collaborations exactly yes, yes. again 
together we're all stronger. Yes. Right? Love that. I think that's a great place to stop. Yes. Um, are you able to tell all the folks at home, give us just the links and the websites and the Absolutely. emails is, and social media? Absolutely. <laughs> so the website is uh, HTTPS colon slash slash discreet odyssey dot com. Colon. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being all, I'm a technical writer by trade. This is what is, is funny for me because I'm into, you know, explaining, writing down explanations for groups, for oh. users, right? Ah. So when it comes to that type of thing, I'm like, I'm going to my business explanation mode. <laughs> but um, so the, the website. website is Discrete Odyssey and we're available on all the social media channels under Discrete Odyssey. It's a mm -hmm. fairly unique name. So mm -hmm. we're able to snag it when, nice. we, when we incorporate it. Um, so on Instagram and Twitter and Tumblr and, and Facebook. Lovely. Yeah. All and and people can, and email? Email is yep. info at discreteodyssey.com. Fantastic. Pretty simple. And, um, and yeah, we're on, I don't know if a lot of people know about FetLife, the social, the, the oh, social I know profile, it. media profile for social, what is it? The social networking space for kinksters. There you go. That's right. Hey, yes. You're I hired. Sponsored. No. You're <laughs> <laughs> but um, that is actually an excellent, just to tie this up, that's an excellent space if you want more information to go to yourself, mm -hmm. is to go to FetLife.com and just check it out and start reading profiles go to groups check out events in your area it's yeah awesome. it's the best place i think to find out what kinky events are happening in the city yes. like in whatever city you are in In whatever city you're in yeah you can see as a whole list you want to go to a munch you want to go just meet people socially at a restaurant that have a particular kink in common it's there you want to see play spaces you want to see events it's all there it so absolutely is. i think that is i agree with you the best resource to find out what kinky stuff is happening in the city like if you're ever struggling over how i meet kinky play partners how i meet yes. kinky people that's the start of it that it sure. really is the start of it yeah. that's the best place to go yeah okay fantastic um so and again you're jillian slash lady, lady gray. gray yes i started yes. being called gray by my friends as a because of the hair because yeah. i let it finally grow out and i love like, it it's beautiful thank you thank you i've sort of kind of into it too but <laughs> um yeah sounding all arrogant about it but um <laughs> genetics you know genetics yes but um and then lady gray was is more my business yes dominant persona yes of is, course. is what i take on when i'm in command mode oh my <laughs> oh my um okay the things i gotta tell everybody about if you live in toronto and you want to see the bedpost variety stage show we do two shows a month the first one is at uh social capital theater uh the third friday of every month at eight and super wonder gallery is the second show the last tuesday of every month at nine uh if you're watching us on youtube uh do a comment uh share it around subscribe it really helps for me and my bed postly business same if you're listening to us on itunes or another podcasting platform uh leave a rating and reviewing just really great things again for me and my biz um we want to thank the Pacific Junction Hotel for hosting us. We want to thank Eggplant Media uh, for producing all this fantastic new content that you're seeing from us. Uh, if you're listening to us just on the audio podcast, you're going to be hearing original music by Stephanie Copeland. You're going to be reached at her website, stephcopelandmusic.com. Um, I want to give... A huge thank you to Jillian, thank Lady you. Gray. Thank you so much, Erin. This has been a lot of fun. Go to Discreet Odyssey. Go to the Check website. Check them out. Thank you very much for having <laughs> me today. I'm like, bah, thank bah, you. Bah, bah. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> and thank you for everyone who's listening and watching. And bye.